My goodness. Well, welcome to Real Reefing. I haven't had a live stream for quite some time with you guys and haven't had a video for quite some time. Thank you to all of you guys out there for joining. Um, comments are open, obviously. Share the stream. Uh, there's a lot going on here. I got Richard Ross here with me today. Rich, thanks for coming by, man. Thanks, Terrence. Uh, so I'm just going to tell you right now what's happened. The three bad things have happened. Uh, all to our friend Terrence here, which is why he had me out here to kind of help him present what's happened. First, his mother died. Then his tank is destroyed. And then his friend and uh, past coworker Vincent died. So we just get that all out of the way. And now we'll, so you know what this is about. And uh, now we'll go through and get the details of all of this horror show that has happened to Terrence. It's uh, been rough. Yeah, it's been like the, two weeks or three weeks. Well, I, it's been, I've had like 30 days of just like absolute, nobody wants to go through it in their life. And, uh, uh, you know, add to that, you never see me anymore up here. Right. You know, you're supposed to be up here for other reasons. Right. No, I was supposed to be here today <laughs> to help Terrence chop up a whole lot of coral and figure out what to do with it. Uh, and there is no coral to chop up well, anymore. Well, we can talk about that. There is some in the back that you can is chop that, up okay, if you yeah. want it. It's not the exact, uh, for, if, I did, my if, calcium reactor material. If, or if you want that 80s tank to come back. <laughs> you definitely <laughs> you definitely can, can do yeah. it. But yeah, it's, it, it's definitely a rough time. So we're going to just kind of just kind of roll through it. Yeah, and this stuff is terrible. And Terrence and I have been talking uh, about it kind of since it happened. So we have the kind of... Uh, survivor's humor already um, that we're used to it, um, which is part of the reason Terrence talks to me about some of this stuff. Uh, but you'll, it's, not, it's not so great, and it's important, uh, I, I think, that we talk about not just the good things that happen in reefing and not just the things that happen in our tanks, but the things that happen around them and the bad things that happen. And boy, is this a king bad thing? And I've never been one to shy away from the camera, as you know, and not from telling people what's going on or what the process is in, in my aquatic world or my own personal life or whatever it may be. 
And so I didn't want uh, this just to hang out there. I wanted to get it out my way to people, let them know what's going on. It's real reefing. So this is part of the reef keeping journey as well yeah. as, you know, life journey of some of these other things. So, yeah. So where, where do you want to start? Let's start with the, um, and, and I think I have tissues over here. So yeah, you bet. You somewhere. Can, you can have, here. Because I got it a, is real. I've got a uh, heat gun that we can no, dry Nancy your said tears it's, with a heat gun. She said it's around here somewhere, but, oh, I'll just go like this. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, it is rough. The most important thing, really, that has happened to me, even though this other stuff is, is phenomenally tough, is the, um, let me get right to here, is the passing of my mother. So, you know, it's a, it's a huge deal when yeah. you lose your parents. And this is, I already lost my dad a number of years ago. Um, my mom, you know, raised me more or less by herself since I was five years old. My parents split. My dad was around, but really it was my mom. Uh, totally independent woman. Uh, go figure. She raised me independent. And, uh, and so she passed away on December 24th uh, after a long I know. What a stupid time. Yeah, I know. Especially because it was like Christmas was her thing too. So right. Of course it, it was. was. Yeah, of course. And so it wasn't unexpected. Uh, you know, we have been taking care of her for like five years. Last two, she's been in a place she had, um, it's very important for people to understand dementia. Uh, she had Lewy body's dementia. Oh. It's horrible disease. That's um, what my dad had. Yeah, I know. We talked about that before. It's a horrible disease. It's horrible on everybody. It's horrible on independent people, like you can't believe, smart people. You know, oh. it's, it's all around a horrific thing. Um, but anyway, so she passed away on December 24th. Um, just real quickly, you guys, I'm not gonna bore you with family pictures, but uh, I owe it to my mom. Hmm. That's her with her motorhome. She traveled in that RV towing a Saturn. It's a 30-foot diesel pusher RV. When she retired, that was her dream. Nine years, she lived going around the entire United States. Oh, that's fabulous. Drove it by herself, 100 pounds soaking wet, um, and, uh, you know, just amazing. Yeah. But anyway, that's yeah. that stuff. Well, it, it, we, because we talked about all this weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, we found out that we lived for probably five years within blocks of each other. We went to the same we, elementary school. We went, yeah, so <laughs> that's insane. It's unbelievable, the connection, and I have a couple of other people that are in similar situations as that with me in the San Fernando Valley where we grew up in Canoga Park. Um, both went to Winneka Elementary School and... Uh, I think he used to beat me up. Uh, <laughs> I got news for you, I was the one getting beat up, buddy. <laughs> yeah, me too. I was a year and a half ahead <laughs> in school. Oh, you so, were getting the crap beat up. So out. I was like barely eight entering the fourth grade, yeah. you know? So yeah, I was definitely the one getting beaten up. And your but, mom was like, well, take it. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. really it, yeah. you know? That was really it. Or you didn't even like go to her with it necessarily a lot of that because it would have been that, but, uh, but super caring woman and uh, everything I am, I owe to her and my wife. Okay. So. And so you go down to the funeral. Oh yeah, that's the next thing, yes. Okay, so, so she dies on the 24th. My mom is from Ohio. She's from, um, let's go back to this other screen, we'll go to us. Um, so my mom, is, my mom is from Columbus, Ohio. She grew up in German Village, which is, Literally, it's an immigrant village in Columbus, Ohio. And she, um, you know, went to St. Mary uh, High School at St. Mary Catholic School uh, there in downtown Columbus, Ohio, the entire time of her education. And so that's where we went to have our services. So we flew out there, had our services at, uh, at the church. We got a um, really nice uh, Airbnb, like right next door to the church that was a restored, like, 1860s house or whatever. And it was, uh, you know, it was pretty amazing. Uh, everything went really well. Service was great. Everything turned out like you could only expect, you know, in one of those things. And then I was expecting to come back home on Monday and uh, I have my RV, which you guys that watch the channel, if you haven't, go subscribe to Real Reefing <laughs> because you can see how we travel around in the RV. There's our tissues. And uh, yeah, my, I, haven't st I haven't needed them yet, but uh, if, I have, if I didn't need them through my mom's stuff, I probably won't need them for the aquarium. Let's just say well, that. Probably not, yeah. And there's, there's a reason we're in the garage wearing jackets and hats. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's, it's more than the aquarium. Yes. 
So I'm reading all of your comments too. Thank you for all the kind wishes. Um, I am watching uh, this uh, roll by. So uh, yeah, and, if I don't... Ty and Tyler, you're not late. We're just getting to the meat of it now. Yeah, we're just getting started. So thank you all for joining us and for sharing this around and everything and get this information out. So anyway, so we went to there. So I was expecting to come home. I was expecting to get in the RV, which we had down at my in-laws house in LA and take like two weeks to just you know, soak it all in. Cruise around in memory of what your mom loved to do. At the beach, right? Yeah. Which is what, you know, we spent a lot of time in the Ventura County beaches growing up. And... I, Rich, I just want to give you a hug. And I, thank you so much for being You're here. Welcome. It means so Nancy's much Nancy's an off-camera hug. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. So, uh, so anyway, so I, that's what I was expecting to do. So, Saturday was her funeral. Sunday... We went and visited some, um, you know, some uh, family members, and I started looking at my tank stuff. But before we get into the details of all of that, let's just like let's do the. Uh, we, we were talking about rolling the music from the <laughs> from from the Oscars, you know, in remembrance or whatever they were. Oh yeah. Let's let's take a look at some well, of let's the take tank a look, stuff. Oh, look at the tank as it was. Yes. What are what are what are we mourning? Today, I think that's important, okay. right? Um, so this actually, and let me try to get us a little bit out of the way there. So this actually is the last full tank shot that I have of the aquarium. It's not a great shot. I just happened to fire it off. You can see there's reflections in the glass and everything else. But I was just like, every once in a while, I just had to fire off a shot on it, and um, and that's what it looked like mid uh, mid to the en end of December time frame. It so, looks terrible. It looks like it was going downhill anyway. Yeah. <laughs> So this is why Rich needed to come out and, yeah. and cut things. Yeah, we were going to chop a bunch of stuff up. I was going to try to find some homes for it at my place. And then we, like, I was going to drive home and drop it off at stores on the way home uh, that we knew. Yeah, and so the, for scale, so people that are looking at this can have scale that maybe haven't seen this before. The tank is 96 inches wide, 32 inches high, and 32 inches front to back. So when you see some of those corals in there, that hydnophora that's in the front, that's touching the glass, you can actually see there's some algae on the glass that I wasn't able to scrape because it was right there. That's like, like 14, 15 inches around. And I actually cut it down to this big 18 months ago. So that's how stuff just grew in this tank. Yeah. Um, in the very back of the tank, in the middle, there's actually a Dippin' Dots acropora back there. That's like 18 inches by 16. And then in the right third over here, which I can't point on this evidently, but right above and to the left of those heniocus, um, is the pearlberry acropora that, uh, that so many of us absolutely love. And it was tabling out, and it was about 16 by 15 inches uh, tabling yeah. out up there. How many total gallons of the display, not the system? 425 gallons in the display. It's a reach, uh, it was a Reef Savvy uh, Aquarium Felix custom built it for oh. me. Um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a lot of ah uh, along with this. Um, but as you said, with the stuff from my mom and, and now the latest stuff with Vincent we'll talk about a little bit, and, and this, what ended up happening in my house, it's like this is, I, I mourn it, but it's different than if it had just all like crashed on me or something. Right, so this is not a tank crash. Right. This is, this is the scary disaster that is thankfully very rare, but can happen to any of us. We'll get there. Um, oh, there's more, more. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's the hydnophora. You can see I ha actually had some, um, um, you can see there's some death on the inside just from flow not being able to get into that yeah. thing. It's starting to happen. That's why it needed to get cut up. Um, there's the left side, a bunch of those acros. There's that acropora, the pearlberry. Pearlberry. Mm -hmm. I think I have five of these corals at my house. This is a, uh, this is a robusta. So this I got from Unique Corals from Joe Caparata um, as a two-inch frag. And these things Those are grow notoriously slow, and they don't keep their color for most people. And uh, this was in the sand bed, you know, <coughs> way down at the bottom. And it grew really well. It kept the pink tips on it and the bright green. It was in really thick base. I actually had, had to frag off part of it to move it, and I couldn't do it in the tank. Yeah, so you had to pull the whole I thing? I pulled the whole thing out, brought it into my garage here, and got the pruning shears from, from the backyard, <laughs> like, yeah. like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's on the Instagram, real.reefing on Instagram. <laughs> and Reef Beef Podcast. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Rich. That's good. Uh, I'm all for it, man. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, so then there's that uh, Dippin' Dots uh, in the back, and here's another view from this side. 
another view from that side. This is the coral that thankfully I banked with different people. This is the one that kind of hybridized inside my tank, not by grafting or touching, but you can see the different colored polyps on that, um, on that acro um, swirling around. It's actually a, the um, a green hydna, no, no, sorry, uh, anacropora. The green acro, slime ball anacropora was getting scraped by my sea swirl. Right. So, oh, so it was constantly just blowing. And, and it was sucking in proteins all, into the, the, all those proteins and blowing them into this purple coral on the back. And it eventually yeah. absorbed them and made it part of itself. Yeah. Well, I got a piece of this about two months ago and it's already grown half an inch. Yeah. And I'm really curious. I mean, this was the whole point was to see if it what it's going to do. Yeah. So, yeah, no doubt. And I've got a few people that I banked yeah. it with, thankfully, so I can get it around. back because it really is a one of a kind coral. It's crazy looking. Yeah. Yeah, and, and some of the some of the polyps aren't just green; they're green and purple, yeah. like swirled in the in the polyp. Yeah, it's really cool coral. So just it's infected with yes. the wrong that's proteins. Yes, that's 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 exactly that's the best way is. to describe it. Yeah, um, there you can see it a little bit more, you know, in there. And and as I said, this is not like a, a grafting situation or anything else. It's in the coral. Really cool. Really cool. So uh, this is the last video. Um, and not last by right before it happened. It was probably a couple of weeks before. Um, let's see, how do I start that? You're not one of those guys who like... Uh, I guess I can't start. Puts, uh, puts, <laughs> constantly puts 24 hours of video of your tank up to the cloud so you can review what's happened in the last 24 hours? Yeah, no, I don't do that. Um, that would actually be incredibly interesting, but there's no reason for anyone to ever do that. No, and I can't get the video to play, so yeah. that's okay. So now... That's uh, where it's at, right? Well, not now, because it's now completely gone. But, so, that Sunday, I started to get, well, I, did, I, don't get, I didn't get any notifications. That's a whole nother, uh, as I said, cobbler whose children have no shoes kind of thing. Um, in the Apex world, sometimes your certain alerts are going crazy, so you don't pay attention to them. Certain ones you don't have set up correctly. Um, uh, but I do check my apex like literally every hour. Yeah. It's just, it's built into me, right? Cause I'm, and I know exactly what numbers to look at and everything. And so, uh, around noonish over in, uh, the East coast, I looked at my thing and it was like 61 degrees in the tank. And I was just like, yeah, that's weird. And I was with family and stuff. I'm like, yeah, something might be going on there. Oh, there's another number. And I went on with family or whatever. Oh, I'll check. It must be some glitch or something like that. So right. you're, 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 you're out of town for the funeral. So you're not going, the tank isn't correct. like, I got to be on top of this. You've got real world shit to deal with. Exactly. And I, and I'm dealing with, you know, my aunt and my uncle and, and, you know, uh, kibitzing with yeah. them and whatnot. And, uh, and so then a, a couple hours later, I go back to it when I got back to our condo and I'm like, oh shit. Oh, oh. And so I start looking for cameras. And so you just saw a bunch of things that were not right. Correct. Okay. Yeah, things that just weren't right. And uh, now, someone's going to ask. So temperature, temperature, and and the um, and the salinity were off. And then I went and looked, and I saw that there was a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, modules that were just all disconnected. Like almost everything okay, was so disconnected. Right. Something's happened. And I'm like, oh hell. So then I go, no cameras in the house. We're working. So you check your cameras, they're not on either. Correct. Okay. And so I'm like, hmm, that's bizarre. Well, those things are shit anyway, so maybe that's just a bad camera, right? Um, so, so basically I, um, uh, you know, looked at those cameras and they said, oh yeah, that's right, I have a camera in my sump. And the sump, for those of you who don't know, is downstairs 100 feet away under the house. Yeah, and it's, I've got a build thread out on Reef to Reef and stuff. You can go see how it was all put together and everything and where that is. But yeah, it's a four foot by seven foot sump. Um, and it's about 80, about 80 feet away um, down there. And so just, you know, looked at that and I'm like, oh shit, there's no water in the sump. No water in the sump. You know, or it's down to that yeah. much water, right? Well, it should be that much water. Right. So I immediately pick up the phone, call it Paul. <laughs> You know, my two good friends, Paul and Vincent, um, you know, called up Paul, said, Paul, something's going on with the tank, and he hates getting his calls from me because they happen every once in a while, and these guys are great about it, and I owe them so much. Um, 
I don't know what's up, something crazy going up. He probably went and looked at it because he's got access to it. Saw it was probably pretty major, but he was like, well, I got some things going on. I don't know if I can do it. Maybe you can call Vincent or whatever. And I'm like, cool, okay, I'll call Vincent. So I called Vincent, got his voicemail, left voicemail, um, then called Paul back. And I think by that time, you know, Paul had really looked at whatever was going on. He's like, something's going on over at Terrence's place. You need to come with me. We're going down there to check it out. So uh, I wait for that to happen, right? Nothing else I can do at this point. I'm expecting that like my pump has gone bad or I've got a leak in the house or there's something bad. The plumbing is broken. Or... Something bad, but certainly not to the level of bad yeah. was I prepared for. So uh, I'm in this condo, like I said, I'm in Ohio. I'm 2,300 miles away or whatever. Um, and Paul calls me back with uh, trepidation in his voice. Okay. And he says, uh, sorry, I got to get the, uh, the power in here. We're going to go offline. <laughs> it's kind of important. So he says, Fu, I'm so sorry to have to tell you this, but I opened the door and water came flowing out. You've had a fire. The sprinklers are going off in the house. There's water everywhere. And I was just like, oh, I just felt my heart sink, you know, because it's like not so much the, you know, the aquarium, so to speak, okay, but like, okay. Now what's ruined in my house? Right. Now, you've got high-pressure sprinklers because yes. you're a crazy person. Um, well, no, because they're required by... Oh, are they required now? By okay. Santa Clara, since 1996 or whatever. Gotcha. In California, in Santa Clara County, they're required by law to be put in in, uh, in okay. all new builds. Uh, it does, uh, I, it that's doesn't... good that you asked for that because most people around the country, they're like, sprinklers in your house? Right. Like, what, are you an idiot? You know, or whatever, you know, are you like over like, and it's like, no, it, it had to be put in. So yes, they are high pressure. They cook off at like 160 degrees or something. And, uh, and whatever one gets cooked off goes off. So uh, it turns out like four sprinklers went off in the front of the house. At the time I didn't know though. So I was freaking out with them because, you know, some things they work off pressure and off temperature. Like if they get a low pressure, then they'll kick off other ones too, you know? So so they were scrambling around trying to figure out how to turn off the sprinklers. I sent them out to the garage here because the sprinkler kind of pressure thing, everything's out here. There's no shut off. They can't get them shut off. Run around. Vincent's running around like a madman. Paul's running around. And, uh, uh, and then finally, you know, called the fire department out. They had to come out and like have three guys or jaws of life on the thing because they couldn't even shut it off the street. And okay. So it was a, a big deal, right? Um, and immediately called SurfPro, you know, not trying to plug SurfPro or anything. They're not sponsoring this, <laughs> this they, video. They do a terrible job uh, um, when people are in huge distress, and they're very good at their job. They are really good at their job, and they're on call, and they were out there literally in 30 to 45 minutes. I mean, from the time I called them with, a, you know, with their crew, with all their equipment, everything to start, you know, taking care of what they need to take care of, and they've been here every day, you know, since then, you know, to, to deal with it. And it's a big deal. It is a really big deal. The upside and the part that, you know, when I got here, I, I mean, I asked the guys too. The upside really was, you know, you have all the personal stuff that matters the most, right? And all of the damage, the, the top down, what I call top down water damage from the yeah. sprinklers was all in that front set of the house. And so I have some antiques up there, which they'll be able to be, you know, refinished and, 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 and taken care of. Um, you know, family antiques literally from my great great grandparents from Indiana that mm -hmm. they're irreplaceable kinds of stuff furniture um, But that can be taken care of. I have one painting from my uh, from my grandmother That's gone. That's like the biggest heartbreak of the whole thing But the upside is I have a whole house full of that stuff in other parts of the house Yeah, that had it got top-down water damage over there. It would have been devastating. Yeah, and devastating like my son my son you know, he's a, you know, a record collector, you know, so he, he collects all kinds of albums. He's got all of them in his room and stuff like that. And that would have been just devastating, you know, to all of us. So luckily the back half of the house was spared. The water did go from the front of the house all the way through the kitchen into our, fa our family room, which we have like a sunken family room, a sunken living room. Um, and so there's tons of work that needs to be done. Uh, but the crazy part that most people don't realize, I never realized, is smoke damage like you think of smoke damage you think of oh yeah it just smells bad they can fix that this is 
the stuff that cooks off, right? That's electronic stuff and everything else is plastic it's, and it's which is everywhere and everything in the house. It's the worst, right? So all that stuff under the aquarium, when it starts cooking off, right, it, it becomes aerosolized, it becomes, you know, into droplets and whatnot, and it's plastics and burnt nylons and, and who knows, you know, arsenic, all kinds of stuff. Well, that stuff actually went all the way through the house, all the way clear into the back corner of our house where our, our walk-in closet is off our master bedroom, and is so insidious that even drawers that are closed, right, like it's, a sock drawer. It's permeated. It's not just permeated, it's, they're black. It, oh my God. They're black with oily soot. And you move the socks and the little bit of space in the back of the sock drawer, like the base is black with soot. And you know, like everybody, right? You move, when you move into your house, you put all the stuff in your cupboards and then you, like especially deep cupboards, you only use the front third of the cupboard right, for right, the right. rest of your life. And you never <laughs> see the stuff in the back, the stuff nobody wants to talk about. We have cupboards like that with towels and sheets and stuff in it, right? That, Maybe when we have the 16 family members over once in a while, they come out, but a couple of never stuffed full of stuff, took it out and behind it is soot. soot. Like not like a light dusting, but like white to black. <sighs> Crazy. So you, we talked that Sunday night before you even got home mm -hmm. and um, you were preparing to come home the next day and figure out what was going on. And you didn't even have an idea of the scope when right. we talked the first time and uh we had no idea what to expect and right what did you find when you you flew home you came here so first of all when you open the door it is it hits you like you can't believe the smell yeah so as you can imagine fire smell or reef smell all of it because the tank is, was right by the front door. Yeah, so, so everybody knows kind of, okay, what happened? Well, we don't know what happened, okay? That's for somebody else to determine exactly what happened. But there was a fire. It did start under the aquarium. I found this on the web. Thank you. Um, it did start in the aqua under the aquarium. There is no sump under my aquarium. My sump is remote, okay? Um, so it, 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 it is pretty much dry under there, right? Yeah. There, there wasn't any water damage or anything they saw of water causing it to happen. Um, and the fire investigators actually hauled off the whole underside of, uh, of the, the tank. They actually, what you see there, that whole thing, they basically put plywood behind, plywood under, and slid it out to the side and took it all in situ like that, wow. like it is, um, to do the fire investigation. Um, as far as you know, what was under there, I mean, Everything under there really was from uh, just two companies, uh, you know, Neptune Systems and ReefBright, because I have uh, ReefBright strips that were up in my tank. Um, no, nobody knows what caused it, how it got caused. Um, you know, to be, to be honest, right, the, the thing is, is that what people don't realize, it doesn't have to be a piece of equipment to cause the failure. Interconnects are often um, one of the biggest uh, points of ignition in right. a situation. So when you talk about power strips, right? Power strips obviously have a big deal. I had one power strip under there. It wasn't even affected. It wasn't even that for sure. The fire guys said, oh, this wasn't for sure the, the, the cause. Um, but like this is off my motor home. This is a pigtail just to show from another thing. Yeah. And the, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but you know, when you get a, uh, <coughs> Uh, when you get something like this that's rated for, let's say, 25 amps, right? It's as it is brand new with the best connection and everything else. Over time, right, due to environmental things, due to maybe you, I don't have this plugged in all the way. As they, as they expand and construct all and kinds power of things, on and off. That 25 amps, it, 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 you know, it might start not to be where it can handle that 25 amps on, onto here anymore, right. even though the thing was rated at that. And so this is what happened on my RV, same kind of thing, right? You have a kind of a crappy connection, some water gets in there, right? And now all of a sudden I try to pull 23 amps into the RV. Well, it basically fused the extension cord together with this one. And that's yeah. why I pulled it apart. That's why it has no plugs on it anymore. And so that kind of stuff can happen. It creates arcing, right? Yeah, and, and funny enough, I'm in the process, well, I just finished putting in the battery backup system for my tank, mm -hmm. but because the system's 20 years old, I'm going through and redoing all the electrical. You know. Good idea. It's just time to redo it. Yeah. And uh, a couple weeks ago, or actually just before, a week before you called me, I was, what is that? I'm smelling that burn electrical 
mm -hmm. smell, what is that? And was looking for it and looking for it. And I kept looking at where I have two mm -hmm. extension cords connected. It's an orange and, extension cord, like a regular. I, I, and uh, they're both decent extension mm -hmm. cords. And I, I replaced a, a, a heater controller because I thought that was it and it was making me crazy. And then I was finally started doing the revamp and I unplugged it and it looked fine and I couldn't smell anything from it. And I plugged it one of the blades, the, the, the hot side yeah. was, was melting slowly. Mm -hmm. And it just clearly, it, it, it got wet during the coral spawning I was yeah. doing and was just kind of sizzling away. So, uh, you know, all, it, I'm, it, now I'm even putting all that shit up atop of the tank. Right. So it's, this is the risk we live with, yeah. with aquariums. It's, it, and we it, mitigate it, it as best we can. Right. And, you, and, and I want to say something right that's here. That's the right? important part. You know, Paul Lakeside Reefer here you know, uh, you know, isn't, gonna, <clears throat> it isn't going to waste an opportunity to weigh in with his opinion, which is crappy 12-volt step-down power supply in the EB832. And the fact is, um, and you can kind of see it in there if you look, the 832 that's in there was one of the things that didn't catch fire as severely as everything else. And quite likely the main reason for that is when that particular product became um, UL approved, the plastic that is required to get a UL rating is different plastic that's, than that stuff that's in other things that you may have, mm. right? Like a, I don't know, like a remote control or something. And so that plastic was actually, obviously it's an up cost and it's expensive stuff. And if that plastic uh, was not that type, that would have been, because you can see where it's all cooked on you know, the side where the, the flames yeah. came over, right? It wasn't the cause. The, the, the fire guy said, oh, that's, that, that's not, the cause is over here somewhere. Um, but he's like, yeah, that should have cooked off. He's like, it, it's clearly made with some good plastic. Yeah. So, so it's, it, we all, we all want to be able to point fingers at yeah. that's the thing that we can fix in the future. And there's really nothing you can fix in the future. You, you've got electricity around water, uh, even if yeah. it's underneath, you're, it's just always a risk. Yeah, which salt is, spray. So you have things like, like uh, uh, you know, you get the salt creep stuff that happens all the time because, because salt water gets aerosolized, you know, with bubbles, micro bubbles and, and stuff that pop at the surface of the tank. And you, you, there's just all kinds of things that can, can make this happen. And, you know, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to, um, to start to get into, well, shouldn't you have done that? Or you could have done that. I can assure you, I've got 50 of those yeah. things in my head already. Yeah, yeah. Of things that I could have, should have, or would have done. But this is here for all of you guys to look like, you got to take this stuff seriously, okay? I took, you know, this really seriously too. I mean, I had stuff up against the wall there. A lot of it was done with 3M tape. Once it caught fire, obviously it fell down. And I mean, the mess in the middle is, is crazy. Um, the, you know, the idea that if you already have, if you open your cabinet up and it looks like a bunch of crap all around, you are already in a worse situation than I was before this happened. So right. fix that. Something, because <laughs> if something happens and you're there and you've got to wade through a bunch of crap to get to the thing that's having a problem, right. you're in trouble. Now, and it, it, it's all, you can only do your best for this, right? right. How far back do you want to go right. pushing to, for, for disaster prevention? Right. There, there, there's, there's a risk to reward benefit calculation to be done. And even with all of that, you're more crazy than I am about that kind of stuff. It, it, it just happens. It's Correct. not... Um, you mitigate as much as you can, but if you understand that you have, you know, <clears throat> again, especially with lighting, right? You have a lot of stuff, you know, um, power-wise coming up for lighting, right? So you have a situation where each one of those lights is 200 watts, yeah. right? At full power. That's a lot of juice. And you've got those bricks with the, with the disconnectable... Um, you know, wall power, mm -hmm. and those things don't want. I see people hanging their the power bricks from that side. Well, uh, you know, getting by the way, and and that that is a connection that can wiggle. And by the way, that's you know, I know I don't work for Neptune Systems anymore, but I w was you know involved with all the stuff that we did on the sky. And one of the things I am, I am in that world that I'm most proud of with that is the power supply is basically the same power supply as the Ecotech power supply. Um, but one big difference is exactly what you talked about. On the Ecotech power supply, the connection goes together and you can just pull it apart. On the Sky power supply, it actually has a locking mechanism on it that you have to pull back to get it to, to open up. So you're not going to get a situation where it could half pull out and you not know it. Mm -hmm. So 
But all of that, and it's, and, it, and it's covered connection on that one too, that's also a very important thing for people to understand is even things too, everybody thinks about AC power. Oh yeah, well it's, you know. No, DC power too. Like if you've got 100 watts running to a one link, right? That connector that's in there has got to be all the way in. It's got to be clean if it's getting corroded. All of these things matter because they're all potential yeah. points of, of ignition on the, on the reef bright, right? Reef brights have the same barrel connectors that go together and they don't always fit together perfectly and they probably have incursion of salt that can happen oh, yeah. in there. So, you know, again, we don't know what happened on this, but it definitely um, uh, it, it happened under the tank. It happened with the equipment under the tank. It could be a connection to something under the tank. Um, but uh, yeah, it's no longer even standing like that anymore. <laughs> yeah, there's just a stand and it's not even there anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting to see what plumbing is left. There's a couple two inch pipes and they're, luckily they look like they have unions on them. So if you use them again, you could take the burnt part off and the sure. rest of it's there. <laughs> no, um, yeah, cut, that's lucky. I'll, it's Spaflex, I'll just cut um, the Spaflex. So it's, it's really interesting uh, because like I say, I'm going through this and looking at the stuff and I'm going, you know, it's 20 years 20 years is a long time to have stuff, you know, mm -hmm. I'm thinking every, every year, every five years at least, I think I want to unplug everything and manually inspect it and put it back in together. Yeah, and there's a, Amanda's talking about, there's a, there's a grease that they put in their connections, all of their connections, and that works with a lot of stuff. I'm not going to necessarily recommend it straight up for everything, but it's called dielectric grease, which yeah. Jeremy just basically posted it up there. <laughs> so, um, so that is something that you can do, research whatever kind of device and thing is before you use it on it. Uh, but yeah, so basically my house is empty. Oh, and you know, the, the props here are to Paul and to Vincent for coming over and having, you know, reef friends that you do have available that will come at a moment's notice to, to help you out with stuff. My reef was pretty much... Um, could take care of itself for weeks on end, but there was always a time, you know, three times a year, or something like that, when I'd be away for three weeks. Um, Vincent was amazing that, like, no matter what, it's hard to see where my my bottle for my CO2 was from my calcium reactor. Yeah. And so, um, uh, no matter what, I would leave for a trip, and I'd run out of CO2, and I always have a bottle there, and I'd call Vincent up. And I'd, Go Vincent, change my bottle! Dude, at lunch, can you go over to my house and change the bottle? It's hot again? Like, yeah. He's like, okay, you know, yeah. and he'd go and, and get it taken care of. I didn't know I was going to get that reflection off, That's the, all right. it off doesn't the, me. the so motorhome. The, the, you know, there's two, there's a million takeaways from here. And you all, like I say with everything, you're going to have to figure out what works for you and what makes sense to you. There's really no recipe for any of this. But some of the takeaways are check your equipment. Don't make it a mess, right? And have people who you know who are willing to come over when you have a problem because that's when it's going to happen. And jumping back to that second point, why you don't want it to be a mess is because you don't want the person who's coming to help troubleshoot some emergency oh, that too, house yeah. <laughs> having to dig through a bunch of crap. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, you know, I tr all of us try to do really well on wiring and everything like that. It wasn't perfect under the tank right there. Um, but it was pretty good um, and compared to some of the nightmares I see out there of people's setups uh, It definitely was was not at that level And so all of you that know who you are or if you don't remember go and look under your tank go have a look um, He's talking go about check me. those connections get those drip loops in especially if there's a sump underneath um, Do all of that stuff use this that you're listening from for me right now as a reason to go take some you know some some action you know? Yeah. So m my electric, almost all of it is on a shelf above the tank, mm -hmm. right? And that was a good idea. Mm -hmm. It still is a good idea. I'm looking at the revamp now and what happened here, and I'm learning more about how I'm going to change it, which is, I've already done part of it, and I've breathed a huge sigh of relief already that I didn't even know I was holding. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so anyway, so, so, so your house is screwed. Um, yeah. It's been about two weeks, right? Yeah, a little over two and a half weeks, yeah. Two and a half weeks, and I walked in, and I got to see the house, and uh, it is now, it's, 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 it just looks like a construction site now, in, in a sense, with some smoke damage. Correct. Um, I can't even imagine what it must have been like. You know, oh, and you were telling me that uh, the, the, the back wall of the tank let go, right? 
Yeah, so as far as, okay, what was the sequence of events that we can surmise? Um, basically, the tank started to cook off. Uh, heat goes up to the ceilings. I've got, you know, like 17-foot ceilings or something, 18-foot ceilings in that part that's, of the house. That's 52 meters. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to Skimate. Um, <laughs> Skimate. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, so the, the heat from the fire went up there. Okay, from what we can tell, and uh, not the, the walls didn't catch fire or anything. Started to cook off the, the sprinklers, but the fire still raged, as far as we can tell, underneath the tank, because obviously it's like an umbrella, so it's, it's still yeah, able to... It, the smoke damage looks like there's a bunch of, uh, underneath and just behind, behind, but not all the way up the wall. Correct. And so then what generally happens when you have one of these, because I've seen some, some photographs of the, uh, these things from fire investigations and stuff over the years is the tank eventually gets so hot that the glass breaks, right? It just crumbles due to the heat, and then the tank lets go. When the tank lets go, you have high velocity water because you have a space that's however big it is with 425 gallons now all wanting to get out. And so that water goes whoosh down and like yeah. this. And uh, I have a, in the back where the plumbing comes up from under the house, it's, you know, uh, coming through the, the, the wall plate, right? And so to, to have access to that, it also has access in the kitchen side behind the cabinets. Mm -hmm. And the water was so powerful coming out that it actually blew coral and cleanup crew and everything under the kitchen cabinets with sand, everything all under the kitchen cabinets. Like, not like this kind of coral, like pieces of coral like this. Yeah, they broke as they and came And went through, through a hole yeah. that big in the wall and went through the other side of the wall and then under the kitchen cabinets. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah, this yeah. is a stupid hobby. <laughs> but we love it. This is a stupid, we just get a puppy, all they're gonna do is chew the mold. It's true, it's true, you know? No. But uh, yeah, but we do it and uh, yeah, I'm gonna do it again. So you're gonna do it again, that's good, because uh, you got all this stuff. Um, it, probably four, six months out of the house before everything's finished? Yeah, so. I'm an optimist. My wife is a pessimist in this regard. Um, I think that we will be able to be in the living side of the house, which means the family room, kitchen, and in our back bedrooms, um, in probably two months from now. Okay. That's my optimistic. Okay. My wife says, no, it ain't going to happen until four to five months. Um, I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, the front and everything else getting done, that's certainly three to six months with all of that getting done. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's what you live through. And, you know, you have insurance <clears throat> for stuff. So I have good insurance, you know, props to State Farm, props to, you know, the Serve Pro guys, too, that were out here and continue to be out here. Yeah, there's a ton um, of them with 5,000 fans going. Corals and fish are not covered by your insurance. No. Just so you know. But I will tell you that... Um, just the glass on that aquarium, I haven't spoken because I didn't want to like alert the world yet on this. I haven't spoken to Felix yet at Reef Savvy, who's going to hopefully do my tank again. I hope uh, I don't have to <clears throat> go through the pains of getting further up the line this before. Maybe but he'll have some sympathy for me. Tell him now. <laughs> oh, I'm going to. Because I'm waiting for this video. It's, it's months. I'm waiting for right? this video. <laughs> but my guess is that just the glass part on the top is at least 20 to 25 grand. Yeah. Just for that. And so that, although I, you know, the, the inhabitants are gone and everything in there and it's sad. And I, I really, there's a few fish in there that I, I miss, not the heniocus. Not the heniocus. And, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and that said, you know, it, 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 it did give me some joy when I told those numbers to the real estate, uh, or sorry, to the uh, insurance adjuster. Oh, and uh, she's like, oh, how much is this aquarium going to cost to redo or whatever? I'm like, well, without the rigging and bringing it in and everything, let me just tell you. And so, uh, yeah, crazy. Uh, Jeff asked, the kitchen's just got done. Are you able to save any of the kitchen or is it a complete redo? Well, the crazy part is, is that I had an RODI issue in my kitchen, for my kitchen RODI, uh, right before COVID started. Uh, my, um, uh, my sink drain, and this is another thing you guys should pay attention to because you don't think about this. My sink drain actually got stopped up. Uh. I knew it got stopped up. I'm like, I'm going to deal with that in the morning. No. I went to bed. Oh, no. Woke up in the morning, and there's like a, a waterfall over the sink oh. like this. And down across <laughs> the floors, 
and over into the family room and all of my kitchen cabinets were sitting on top of the three quarter inch tongue and groove oak wood. And so because of COVID and everything else, I didn't get that kitchen finished and all the flooring all the way to the front of the house I had done until uh, July of last year. Yeah. So I literally have had this in place like six months, right? Yeah. Of everything redone, including the whole kitchen and everything because everything had to be gutted. And so now this happens and all the flooring that just got put in six months ago, all gone. All gone. Heated floors in the <clears throat> kitchen, rip them up. But the kitchen's in okay shape itself. So the kitchen, yes, to answer his question, thank you for reminding me. Um, we will see about, because of the smoke and soot damage, what's gonna happen. Uh, visually, everything looks pretty good everywhere except for that side that faced the tank which mm -hmm. got inundated with nasty stuff and everything. And that, that might have to get ripped out and replaced. Um, things like the refrigerator is probably going to have to be replaced because it's a, it's a top level sub zero with the, all the stuff gets inside it's, it. Yeah. It's got, yeah, it's, it breathed in a lot of smoke. Yes. So all of that stuff, um, you know, all the heating and air conditioning, but the kitchen looks like we're going to, you know, probably three quarters of it is going to be, you know, just fine. Um, but okay. all the floors are going to get done and, it's just a lot, man. It's it is, a lot. It's a and, lot. You know, thankfully, like I said, I had, you know, people like Paul and, and certainly Vincent to, you know, to come over here. He didn't just come and say hi and leave. He stayed for like two or three hours, Vincent did, to make sure of different things, make sure this was done, make sure that's done, wait for the surf pro, get the people, get the fire truck, all of those things. So, so um, big props to him. We're going to circle back to your tank again in a mm -hmm. second, but this is a good time, I think, to, to get to the next topic. Because... You called me, you, and I think you left me a message that said, call me when you can. Right? Yeah. And Terrence never does that. <laughs> I don't. Right? So I, that, so I called him, he told me about this. A week and a half later, I get another message from him. and says, call me as soon as you can. I'm like, oh, no, what the hell happened? Yeah. So I'll, 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 I'll let you yeah, say what Yeah, so, so we, um, we got the horrible news. Um, last uh sat on saturday uh, over the weekend that uh, my good friend um a salesperson who worked for me and uh yeah the guy who came and rescued my house and everything else suddenly passed away uh at home not a whole lot before that and there's no no drama around it there's no known cause of death at this point or not um but um he passed away at home and um it's super sad he wasn't that old mm -hmm. um uh, it, it just it's one of those things that you can't you know vincent you know it's it's gone yeah he's gone and just... you know there's you know there's no coming back there's no more hey vincent let's go have a meal or anything else and it's super sad and it's super, it's sad for reef keeping people and apex people i mean any of you guys who are watching this who are um, avid Apex Neptune Systems people, you probably have had a support ticket maybe from Vincent, or maybe you had a good personal connection with him that you could just text him or call him on the phone and he would answer it all the time and take your issue and work through your issue. Maybe yeah. one of you guys on here is a, a local fish store who had issues with Apex stuff and he told you there was nothing wrong with it and he's just gonna take all the gear and he's gonna test it out himself in his office and I'd walk in his office and go, what are you doing? What is all these, these tridents doing in your office? Why do you have all these apexes set up in this? Well, the, you know, the store owner says that this thing just doesn't work and this and that and the other. And I, you know, I, I just want to see for myself what's the, what the situation is. And, uh, and yeah, you know, so it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's horrible. Um, let's get some pictures of Vincent in here so we can. Yeah. And... So there's, there's Vincent there on the right with us at a, uh, at a show with my, you know, with apex mom, uh, my wife, Nancy. Uh, and Tom, and uh, I don't remember exactly which show this is um, in particular because there's a lot of them that we do. Oh, that was uh, Magna 2022. Yeah. No, I, I <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, anyway, um, it, it, it's a horrible loss. Um, and, and yeah, and I have, uh, I have stories. Some of them I can't tell you guys here because some of you might not like the story. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, if you see me, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, maybe sometime I'll tell you some of those. But in the, in the, in the meantime, Vincent was, uh, like, incredible with cars. He loved his cars. He had, oh. a, he had an Audi that, uh, you know, was a big 
A, I don't even know, A8 or whatever the hell they are. It's the big dude, right? You're looking at me? But it had a big old engine in it and, you know, like 500 horsepower. It had this exhaust on it. It didn't make it sound like an Audi at all. I always teased him about yeah. it. It was one of those guys like, you know, kind of sound on it. And, uh, yeah, and he loved his cars. He loved uh, Audis and Porsches and all of that. And this was actually at a company event where we went and uh, raced go-karts. You know? Oh, down up in uh, yeah, Burlingame? Yeah, in the good old days. And John know? won. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, John. Yeah, John won. And, you know, good old days uh, with Neptune Systems having fun, you know, real fun. Vincent, uh, I didn't know, know him as well as I could. Mm -hmm. He and I butted heads about stuff that had nothing to do with reef tanks. Yeah. A little bit. But we never, it was never an issue, um, which was great. Um, and I always appreciated him chiming in and with information and help and, and, and good advice. And, and, you know, every time I saw him, he's just a great guy. He's super passionate and, and would not roll over on something that he believed. Exactly. That was... Yeah, no wonder the two of you guys got along so well. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, a, spirited conversations and spirited yeah. arguments and stuff like that about different things all the time. And, you know, and Vincent, um, you know, there he is, uh, you know. Vincent would eat food sometimes. Yes, he would eat food. We were big food people. But Vincent also, there isn't a hobby, I think, that Vincent didn't try. Oh, yeah? Or, or didn't uh, enjoy for some period of time and had all the information always about it, right? If you wanted to do it, right? Golf, he knew everything about golf. He had all <laughs> the best golf clubs or whatever. And he just didn't, any of these things, he didn't just, like, like dip his toe Vincent, in any one of these hobbies or these things, it was all in, right? So uh, RC planes, right? I, he worked at, I think he worked at a hobby shop because he was so into RC planes before he came to Neptune Systems. This, this is what it was. And, and uh, yeah, you can just go down the list, you know, the aquariums, that. And, and another thing was travel and food, right? So he loved, loved, loved being able to go out and see customers and go to the trade shows and a big deal for me with the people that work for me when we did uh, um, uh, when we did shows is all the guys put in all these guys put in 110 percent, and they always knew that at the <laughs> end of the event, right? That and I brought this from day one. I mean, day one when Kurt probably wasn't ready for this. Okay, we go and have a great meal, like drop in serious coin. Yeah, yeah, meal, yeah. Okay, you guys yeah. worked your ass off. You put a bunch of coin in the bank, okay? We get this thing closed up. We get it done in time. And so they're busting ass to get the thing done always because the restaurants are going to close, you know? Right. And, uh, and then you get to enjoy great food. And that just was right up Vincent's alley. And he just absolutely loved it. Um, and so some of these pictures are us having meals because that's what we love to do. This is actually Vincent. We went to, and Paul's on the stream. He'll know this, this restaurant better than I do, but it's a, I think it's a Spanish tapas place in uh, Los Gatos or what have you. And we went there with Vincent to try it As out. As opposed to the Japanese tapas place next yes. door. <laughs> there he is with Kurt. We're actually having the Japanese barbecue, uh, the gyukaku. Yeah. I don't know if you've been to one of those or yeah. not. And you have, just have big pitchers of beer and, and you cook the food yourself and everything. And there's Vincent at the table with Kurt, the, uh, the president of Neptune Systems. You know, cooking some food off after we probably did Reef of Palooza, which was just super awesome. Uh, this is Vincent with a steak. Now, that Vincent a big loved steak. a steak. And so Cafe Asa, Paul just put in here. Um, so Vincent loved food, but he really loved the steak. And so this is a funny uh, story because we had just done Reef of Palooza um, in, the, uh, in the Marriott down there right across from Disney, right? Yep. And there was a steak restaurant. I can't remember which one. It wasn't um, Bruce Chris, but it was one of the other ones that we went to with all the guys after the show, right? And it's like, yeah, we get to eat whatever we want, right? You know, it's just the way it is. And there's, you know, some big money comes it's, through, right? The bone alone <laughs> in that chop. But what was funny is, is we're, we're sitting there all looking over the menu and we're deciding what we're going to have while we're drinking uh, old fashions and stuff and, <laughs> and, and reviewing what happened at the show. And, of course you're drinking and, and, old fashioned. Yes, and, you know, all the bullshit uh, garbage that Ecotech did or whatever it was, oh, you know. Whoever, whoever and, was that time. Yeah, and so we already decide what we're going to have, each of us around the table, and the waiter comes over. And he's like, okay, um, you know, I just want to tell you guys about specials and stuff. We got some special meats tonight. You know, we've got a, uh, you know, a 16 ounce filet. It's blah 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 blah, and we've got a 28 ounce uh, cowboy, you know, ribeye. You know that that we've got. It's really good. And Vincent, right before the guy pulls out, out like it's 115 dollars or whatever. And it's like that's what I'm having. 
And uh, and I'm just like, and he goes, this is like 150 bucks. I'm just laughing because I don't care. Because this is, this is uh, like, if I have to take the heat for it, when I go back to the office, I'll take it. all the heat, you nice. know, with the boss, which I do. I go in and I go, hey, by the way, here's my expense report. Just want to let you know. Uh, yeah, I know it's, um, you know, the bill is like $900, uh, but, you know, we did this at the show, you know, but it was just so funny because he didn't even flinch. It wasn't like he was timid or anything else. <laughs> give me like, the, give me the like, butt steak. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, give me the most expensive steak on yeah. the menu. Give me the eight pound and, butt steak. And this is steak. the first time he came and did a, a trade show with us after coming out of support. Right? Ah. So he came out of support. This is like the first trade show that he came and did. And then he, you know, did that. So, you know, it, it, it was really great. Jeff Stevenson here says, you know, I remember every meal with him. And that's a great way to remember Vincent, uh, Jeff, because he really did love it. Vincent and I also, we went um, other places too. <laughs> um, we, we, when we had to go tour stuff in Vegas once together, um, I told him about a restaurant that's at the Cosmopolitan that is called Zuma, which is a Japanese restaurant. Really good. They got an insane omakase there. Um, and I said, you got to come. We got to do it together. I'm not going to bill my entire expense report for it because I can't on this particular trip because it's not like a trade show. But we're going to go enjoy this. And it's like a 12 course, like, you know, $140 omakase or whatever. And uh, it's just insane. And the two of us just together there just was just like, oh, oh. Fantastic. You know, two and a half hours later, you know, coming out. And uh, but this one here is actually when we did uh, Reef, uh, no, sorry, uh, Macna in Vegas. And this is at the Chart House in the Golden Nugget. And so you went, I love that you went to the Golden Nugget to eat. <laughs> so only because of this, it's got a the, giant aquarium. Have you been the, there? Fun, yes, but, but it's the Golden Nugget. I know. Okay. I know. Okay. But it is a chart house in the Golden Nugget. I understand. Okay. That's what I'm laughing at. <laughs> yes. So the chart house is known for also their seafood towers was also kind of a, uh, uh, a, 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 a thing for us as well. But at the beginning of the meal, the, the, uh, the server is like, okay, um, I've got some specials. And oh, by the way, I need to tell you about dessert. And we're like, dessert? What do you need to tell me about dessert for? She's like, well, we, we have this orange, um, uh, now it's gonna escape me what, the, what it is, but. Uh, it, orange Julius? No, 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 no. Anyway. Uh, orange marmalade? No, <laughs> no, stop it. <laughs> anyway. But, orange beer. But we need to know now Oh, because they have to Cause, cook it. Because they're going to have to Some take... Some kind of souffle. Souffle, thank like. you. It's an orange souffle. Thank you. I couldn't get it out of my head. So anyway, um, yeah. So there is some forced perspective here, but it's not much. Okay? And so they're like, it's really good. You should, you know... And everybody at the table is like, yeah, sign me up. You know, I think one stupid person didn't. And they, were and they regretted it. $115 each. <laughs> I don't even know. We didn't even ask. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so when this thing comes out... It's in a ramekin that's like a, like a, like a seven-inch ramekin. Okay? It's, it's, a, it's a spaghetti pot ramekin. <laughs> it is. Look at it. It's huge. And, it and that's out. a comedy spoon, too. That's yes. not a regular spoon. Yes. So, uh, so, yeah. So it came, and we, just, we were just so into it. And I love remembering Vincent like this. And also, Jay just mentioned, too, I miss him doing the production. For those of you that don't know, all the Neptune stuff, Vincent was the behind-the-scenes guy working all the production stuff at the time at which I kind of transitioned from me doing it. And it was a time when we really could push the shows and stuff forward because I wasn't worried about this while I'm trying to talk to, to, to Paul or what have you. So Vincent trained up on all the gear and we'd have, you know, four video screens going and the whole thing was crazy. So that was, Vincent was responsible for all of that as well. And moreover, responsible for being able to deal with me right. who change things on the fly all the time. I'd come in in the morning after we already knew what we were gonna do for something, and I go, "It's all changed. We're gonna do this now." <laughs> like what? Like, yeah, and and he just go take care of it, you know, whatever it is, you yeah. know, no complaints. This is the way it was. It's such a, yeah. <laughs> there, there we are, at Jimmy's place in Vegas. Yeah, <laughs> pretty funny, huh? <laughs> That tank is no more, and the new tank that he replaced it with is probably no more uh, because he no longer lives there. But, uh, but yeah, that was fun times in uh, Vegas Magna. We had a great, great, that was the that last was, great Magna, in my opinion. That was a fun show. Yeah, that was the one right before uh, Orlando, right, I think? Yes. The last great Magna. That was 16. Yeah. No, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't know. It's 2027. It was 2027. 18. I think that would have been 2018. 18, right. And then Florida was... 19. Hurricane was 19. Yeah. And then nothing. And then nothing. And then problems. Still nothing. And problems. <laughs> yes. Another, another topic. That's, yeah. No, we're not doing that. Anyway, uh, there he is there. 
Um, this is a fun one too. This is, uh, you know, we, you know, we have to move stuff in the vans. I should say they move stuff in vans and trucks, Paul, uh, Tom and Vincent, uh, we would get rental trucks and then we would have to figure out how to like go to dinner in a rental truck, you know, and how we're going to get all of us into that particular thing. So this is one of those, uh, times when we all stuffed ourselves in there and sitting on each other's lap while trying to figure out how to get to the next spot and uh, definitely super good times uh, for sure. Um, th th this, is, this is the best picture ever. Okay? We, um, after, the, uh, after 2020 and us posting a really great year, um, I told the guys, you know, hey, if we post and hit our numbers and everything else, dude, we're going on a trip. Mm -hmm. Company sales guy trip. And so we went out to Utah and uh, did some skiing and snowboarding and whatnot. And we got to the top of this one hill and the sign was there. And it was like, it was like, oh. you know, like, I can't even believe that sign is there. We are getting a picture. It's going to be awesome. And then we printed them up. I've got one over there on, on canvas and each of us has one of those pictures. Um, and it was such a great time and, you know, had by all. Absolutely. And uh, yeah crazy so i uh, oh and is that the last vincent picture yes um there's a gofundme oh yeah yeah yeah. to help uh there. vincent's family deal with his untimely and yes uh, frankly stupid loss it's uh so there's obviously a long url to this but i've created a tiny url called uh, tinyurl.com slash remember vincent so to help out the family to help out another reef keeper uh for whatever they may need Please go out there. Please, you know, show them your love that way. Um, Vincent was an amazing, awesome guy that, um, that so many people, if they didn't know him, they knew him through support. They knew him through trade shows. They knew him through uh, stores, all of that. Um, just another one of those kind of unsung heroes in the reef keeping space. Yeah. And, you know, I, I like to talk about the tangential aspects of our hobby rather than just the equipment and the life that we have. I like right. to talk about social issues and the people and things like that. And, you know, uh, I wish we would do it more. I, and I wish, uh, you know, and, and everywhere in life, you know, damn. Yeah. You know, damn. And everyone's got stories like all those and people are wonderful. And, and no matter how much that we, we shake our fists at each other over, yeah, things only we oh. care about. Everyone still well. The human side a has to be person. discussed, and that's the reason why I want to do this live stream as well, yeah. right? Because there's a human side to everything, and we shouldn't shy away from that or feelings or those kinds of things. It's all important stuff, and it's all integrated into reef keeping. We do the reef keeping stuff because we have a joy for it for for many reasons, and it brings us joy, and other people in our life bring us joy. And it's all kind of integrated together. And yeah, I laugh about calling it, well, the real reefing channel, but it is because that's like my wife and I now going around the country and like visiting shows or stuff I'm going to do with the new aquarium that's coming up, but keeping the, the human element into it. And it's not just, hey, I've got a new light. Let me see what this right. light does. You know, that there is that human element. Right. And the passing of Jake, I think, brought that forward, you know, to, to a lot of people to have a better understanding of that side of things. And, uh, and now there's another one with Vincent. Yeah. You yeah, know? I'm glad. I'm glad you're going around to different places and doing interviews like that with mm -hmm. real reef keeping, because that's the attitude that reef beef has. But we don't want to go around to different stores. So I, I'm glad that there's a couple of us out there, you know, doing not the, you know, right. the same kind of podcast. Um, Let me see. If as I, can get I back pat myself on here. my own back. Um, this brings me back to what I wanted to talk about before, which might be a good way to oh, what's look. Oh, Jim Morrison's van look. doing up there? <laughs> what you, that's an old, I don't why, know what I'm doing. Why are you doing that? I don't have Stop Vincent. Stop pressing buttons. Stop pressing buttons. I don't have Vincent. Stop pressing buttons. <laughs> Sorry. So go, go to the, um, the, 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 the GoFundMe for Vincent's family. Got it. Put that up again, I think, if you can, because why not just leave that up for a little bit? Um, you're going to do another tank. Yes. Yes. And um, I don't, don't t tell me anything because you probably have a thousand ideas about what you would do differently and what you would do the same. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad you're going to do it again. Uh, and I can't wait to see what innovations and changes and things you learn to make your life easier. You know, I'm, I'm tempted to 
to tell you, do the same exact thing, just make it better. And then I'm also tempted to say, you should do a wave tank like I want to do when my house burns down. I want to do a wave tank. I do want to do a wave tank, but I can't do a wave tank in the front of the house like you that. You need more space anyway. I need more space, yeah. and there's water and all oh, kinds it's, of stuff. Oh, there's so, so many bad ideas about a wave yes, tank. Yes, but I want to, I want, what I, I <laughs> for I the longest want. time, literally like 10 years, I've wanted to do a cold slash warm slash tidal zone local mm. tank, right? Which is, it's cold, but it's warm, but it's not cold, like out in the depths cold, because it's also in the tidal zone. <laughs> And have tidal animals because you can go collect. Yeah. You, you know, and have have native, you know, Central California tidal animals in it with a wave, right? That's in there, and you know, flooding up and flooding down, and, and use all of the electronics. That won't be that tank. That will be just if I ever do it, it'll just be a fun project to work on. Maybe it'll be here. Right. You know, I don't know. Um, as far as yes, rebuilding, I don't think I ever had even a hint of a thought in the back of my head that I wouldn't do another tank. Yeah. The passion runs deep. Yeah. Okay? We're crazy people. We are crazy people. Anybody else have something like this happen to kick them out of their house and burn it down and everything. And God love my wife, you know, you know, and, and, you know, it, it's, it's incredible when you, you know, I've been together, you know, with my wife now for 30 years. You have 25 year anniversary 25 yesterday. Years yesterday. You know, congratulations to Rich too. Thank you. And when you're with that perfect person, right, in in situations and moments like this, is when you know you made the right pick and that everything is the way it should be and et cetera, et cetera. Because it wasn't like right out of it, oh, that that goddamn aquarium again and. You, you put your life into that aquarium and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I don't want that thing in here anyway yeah, or whatever. A, and she's like, oh, no, you get to do it again now. No, she's <laughs> like, you get to do it again and can we go bigger? Nice. You know? So it's like, yeah, you know why, nice. you know? So I will be doing things different. I don't know if it'll be bigger, bigger, okay? Um, yeah, it should be. You know, um, I don't know. Dimensionally, I think I'm going to change some things around with it. Deeper. Front to back. Yeah, front to back, deeper. It's always... Front to back is what I mean by deeper. Yes. That's that's always the one that you can never do. And I'm thinking about shortening much. it this way. So instead of, well, because I have space requirements, right, to clear through that area, right? Okay. So it, like, like, like what I think matters to what you're going to do in your house. And I like the symmetry in the front, so I can't like <laughs> offset it to the side in the front because yeah, okay. the symmetry in the front of the house looks good, so I still have to center it in that room. Um, but bring it out, like you said, make it deeper. Um, but to do that because of clearance coming around it, I might have to make it a foot shorter this way. Gotcha. You know, well, so it's fair. seven feet instead of eight feet. Aww. You know, I know, I know. But maybe it'll be 45 inches front to back. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. And you're still gonna make a solid block of coral within two years. Yeah. 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 No, okay. and, and, the, and the sump is still running. Vincent, again. <clears throat> My bud went down there to the to the room. I had 100 gallons of salt water ready to go. Oh, okay. he filled up your sump? Got and it all running again. Dro dropped that into the sump, and I said, just drop that in the sump, drop half the fresh water in the sump, get it down to 30 PPT, I don't care. Just fill it up with water. Um, and uh, and then I didn't even have to ask him. He disconnected the return pump, turned it sideways, the, you know, the... Um, the Abyss uh, A400, mm -hmm. and just stuck it sideways like that, so it's just creating, you know, a gyre in the, in the sump. I cranked on the skimmer the other day, and, uh, you know, there's still macroalgae down there, and the light's on in the macroalgae. The rock's still down there. Everything's still alive. All the rock and everything from the tank is over in uh, the backyard. So um, what I'm going to be doing, i just so obviously busy, is I'm going to yeah. be taking piece by piece of that and sticking it into the sump so I don't overload the bioload into the sump. And just because there's still bacteria and good stuff on that rock still, and I want to have it stay nice and just keep loading another one, you know, every three, four or five days, just add another piece of Perfect. rock into it and, uh, and bring that rock back to life down there. And then I'll probably stick uh, some lights that I have downstairs over that and turn it kind of into an aquarium yeah, so yeah. that it's ready to go. You have to get some herbivores down there. Yeah, and just when it's ready to and go. Then when, boom, you'll have Insta Tank. Insta Tank with perfect. the same DNA that it had before. And it's perfect. So that's, again, look to the upside on all yeah. this stuff, right? And this is really where the, the, the community of reef keepers comes into play. You know, you will have frags raining down on you. Yes. You know, it's, it's, uh, yes, and that, we're amazing. That's, when, again, the things that make it easier to, to be able to, to take in, right? Yeah. You know, um, my fish load was lower because um, I needed to do, you know, fish, they, they die. 
on their own. Yeah. Believe it or not, it's not because of you. Well, it's just life. People, fish die. People die. So my fish load was lower. I needed to actually add some more fish back into the tank when it happened. But my, <clears throat> like, my powder blue tang, you know, that yeah. I've had for years. You, you know, you're not fooling me here. I know you did all of this to get rid of those hennyokas. <laughs> <laughs> Those damn heniocas. Those damn heniocas. My entire family loves. I know. And uh, and basically made my tank into an SPS only tank, <laughs> not a mixed reef or anything else. It, 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 it that was what it is. But yeah, it's a. And by the way, GoFundMe's out there. So that tiny URL goes to a GoFundMe for Vincent. So make sure you head out there. You know, show him some love. Don't be too cheap. You know, you pay a hundred bucks for a coral. Pay a hundred bucks to Vincent. Okay. I mean, seriously. Vince family needs, you know? no, needs, and if you, everyone at this time needs all the help they can get. And if you ever got a, uh, you know, if you can afford 20, 20 is fine. But if you ever got a, a, a help by him, right, with a, with a ticket, I'm expecting a, a Benjamin. Okay? And Paul also hated your honey oak. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> uh, and I had to feed those things. Can I, I'll leave this up for a little longer. But I had to feed those things in a sequence so they wouldn't eat the good food, right? So I, you know, I have Larry's food or whatever, right? I couldn't just throw Larry's food. Oh, because the honey oaks. Could... <laughs> suck it up. So I had these other pellets, like spectrum pellets, like three millimeter, four yeah. millimeter, the big like koi <laughs> fish type pellets, and I chuck those in there, and they <laughs> like this, yeah. and they get a little full in the belly, so they weren't so anxious on the, on the other food. So as we look to wrap this up, yes. Um, check your electrical. That, sure. Let's that, go back to. Uh, check your, check your electrical connections. Um, clean up your electric mess now while you're thinking about it and don't get heniocus. Those are the three takeaways. Yes, yes, heniocus especially. Yeah. Um, there, now I got the URL on that one. How's All right. that? And then, uh, no, that's great. And it's, uh, um, you know, we didn't talk about how to get out of this, so I'll let you figure that out in real time. Okay, so the <laughs> only thing I ask you guys for is, look, I'm now on a little bit of a, been on a little bit of a break from real reefing, but it is still a thing that I'm doing. Um, and I am still traveling in the RV as part of it, and I will still be doing stuff, you know, going out to stores and things like this, um, and stuff at home. Obviously, as I rebuild the, the new tank and I start getting to that, I'm going to be doing more live streams, more involvement out there in this channel. So if you want to see that stuff, go out to YouTube. If you're on Facebook right now, make sure you subscribe on YouTube at Real Reefing. Just search for Real Reefing Channel. And uh, yeah, Moorish Idols. Just not, you mean the Moorish Idols? Put that up there. That's it's funny. Not the, uh, uh, it's um, that's funny. Fake Moorish Idols. Uh, budget Moorish Idols. Yes. So like, um, eat all the corals you want. So yeah. So go out. Do me a favor. Subscribe out there on the YouTube channel. Follow me on the Facebook stuff. I do a lot. Most of the stuff out on YouTube. I also have an Instagram at, at uh, Real Dot Reefing. So um, you know, uh, instead of uh, you know just looking at this thing, go check your wiring. You know. Yeah. Do, do, I, I'm king of not doing stuff because I'll get to it. I'm telling you, the little bit I've done already, I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and and yes. I can't wait. We're going to make a... You're all going to be like going to your houses now going oh, like this. The worst. <laughs> I had that smell for two weeks before I was able to track it down. Yep, yep. So anyway, do me a favor. Go out, do the subscribes and all of that. And a uh, huge thanks to Rich for coming down from way up north in the Take great off, white eh? north <laughs> with his his uh bob and doug mckenzie you know My toque. his toque uh, and all of that and until next time it's real reefing with rich um and yeah thank you so much we'll yeah close it down hug the people you love oh that's for sure and be nice to the people you hate <laughs> there you go